This UFO is over a hundred years old and the poor thing has never been finished. Now, I'm sure we've all had it. You walk into a charity shop, see what has to be the most amazing fabric and get it home only to find out it's someone else's UFO. And normally, I've got to be honest, I hate this because I feel the need to finish other people's UFOs rather than actually do my own project. So I normally finish whatever it is they're working on and then never really use it. But because I've contributed to it, I feel the need to keep it and it takes up space, which isn't very fun. And then there's the times where you go into a shop, see a UFO that you just can't turn down. And the other day, guys, I had exactly that. Now, this is a half-made tea cozy. It has been painted on both sides on what I think is either a satin or a silk. It's a little bit hard to tell. This one also has one on. I can't remember what this style of picture is called, where you've got the girl in the garden with lots of flowers, but I've seen a lot of similar pictures over the years. One side is also lined in the same satin. The other side has kind of like a cotton or, I don't know if it's like jersey or something, but it's absolutely gorgeous. And there's a bit of excess to here around the corners that will need trimming too. A lot of the satin is fraying, which is a shame, but the reason I brought it isn't because I needed a tea cozy, though I am obsessed with tea, so this will definitely get used, but it's because this project, guys, this UFO is from the 1920s. Yep, you did just hear that right, 1920s. This UFO is over a hundred years old, and the poor thing has never been finished. Now, I paid £10 for this in a shop called Orinoco, which is a shop in the UK that are technically charity shops, but their main mission is to stop various crafting materials and stuff going in the bin, so they recycle pretty much everything they can. If you've been with my channel for a while, you know that ever since it opened a few months ago, it has been my favorite shop ever. And this is one of those things where the first time I went in, they had this in the window and I loved it, but I didn't want to buy it because, well, it's somebody else's UFO. And then I came home and I kept dreaming about it, like literally dreaming about it. And I kept thinking about it and I went back and it was still there and I went, no, no, I still don't want it. And after I'd been back about four times, they'd advertised it on Facebook. They were trying to just get somebody to buy it and finish it because again, it's from the 1920s. This is a hundred year old UFO guys. And this both excites me and terrifies me. But the fact that nobody else had adopted it and I had a little bit of extra money one day and I went in and it was still there and I just went sod it. You know what? It's calling to me. We're gonna have to do this. And so now I have to finish a hundred year old UFO, which um, yeah, there's quite a bit of pressure there. <laughs> but unfortunately this project doesn't come with everything we need to finish it. So I think the first thing we need to do is find some nice satin bias binding to go around the edges. And I am gonna be doing this entire thing by hand, mostly because looking at it, I'm 99% sure. You know, I'm gonna take that back. I'm reasonably sure this was machine stitched. Yeah, no, those stitches are way too neat and even and well distributed to be a hand stitch. So this was machine stitched. It is utterly gorgeous, but I am gonna finish it by hand because I feel like that's appropriate. Fingers crossed this works out really, really well. Also. Another thing that makes this really unusual is I have seen these kind of things before, but always the pictures have been embroidered. I've never seen one that's been painted, which honestly just makes this extra cool in my opinion. To begin, I matched up the two sides and pinned them together. Then after a few days of procrastinating, I will admit, I stitched them by hand using a back stitch. And it was at this point that I realized how long even a little project like this will take if I am doing it by hand. However, no regrets. We are committed and we are going to get through this. Once that was done, I pinned over the excess fabric to cover the raw edges, putting it all in place including trimming and moving a few pieces elsewhere before beginning to stitch that by hand. Next I got some black satin from a charity shop and cut strips well, this is looking darn neat, so I am very, very happy. She is absolutely stunning, and I think if we turned her the right way around, she would look very good. However, before we turn her the right way around, the last thing we need to do is just trim down this and finish this side. With that, I've got some black kind of satiny fabric. It's more or less the same to what is there, and we're going to stitch it, turn it over, and then just stitch it again, and then we can finally make ourselves some tea pinning it to the base of the tea cozy and hand stitching that on as well. I then rolled it over to hide the raw edge along the base, though because some of the base was frayed, it wasn't necessarily a straight line, which is a bit of a shame, but not something we can't live with. Let's face it, this last month or so with me moving house has been hectic. My home is still a mess, <laughs> my apologies. But one thing that I found has really, really helped me is these, which are my cosplay planner notebooks, which I have designed and created myself. And I am very, very proud of them. <laughs> so proud, in fact, that though this was originally intentioned to be a personal project just for me, I have decided that I should share them with you guys. Meaning they are now available for download on my Ko-Fi and my Etsy shop. And if you used code 12 days of cosplay Christmas, you can get 10% off. The original price is 10 pounds, 
around, though Etsy likes to add random fees onto my listing price. So no promise what the end number is going to be there, but that is why we have the discount code. These all come as downloadable PDF files and can be filled out either on the computer or by hand. Especially when moving right now, my life has just been hectic and keeping organized with all of these being a thing has just made everything so much easier. It makes it easy to keep track of the multiple projects I'm working on at the moment that I have to get done before I leave, along with where I'm at with all of them, what still needs doing, what materials I need to buy, and also helps me to set goals for the projects that I'm going to be doing next year because, well, long story short, I have cut out about six months worth of content. The planner that's helped me most with this is probably my 90 day planner, which helps me set my goals. It means that I've been able to list out anything that I'm still missing from these projects that I can get once I'm in my new home and tick off everything that's already done. Also, I'm just proud of how professional this looks. I mean, isn't it just amazing? <laughs> I've worked really, really hard on this, guys, and it would mean the world to me if you would take a moment to support me and maybe just have a look at them. So please check it out. The links for both my Ko-Fi and my Etsy shop, along with the code, are all in the description down below so that you can easily copy and paste it. Otherwise, have a wonderful festive season, guys, and back to the video. While we make a cup of tea, let's talk about this pattern that's on the Teas Cozy. And for this, I need to say a special thank you from Marty from Scraps and Sequins, who showed her mum the design, only for her mum to recognise it and tell me it was a variation of a sun bonnet suit. So thank you, Marty, and thank you, Marty's mum. This design is a variation of the Dutch doll, Bonnie Bonnet, Sun Bonnet Baby, and Sun Bonnet Sue. It is a textile image that has been popular for centuries at this point, as variations of it pop up again and again and again. She's been most widely portrayed in quilts and is often depicted working, playing, and occasionally getting into trouble. The first iterations were sunbonnet clad little girls who appeared in quilt patterns during the 1800s. Then in the early 1900s, sunbonnet zoo began to appear as well. She was often sold on appliques or embroidery patterns, most notably by McCall's, and was shown from the side wearing a large bonnet and an oversized pinafore crinoline dress. I actually found a pattern for one of these in my great grandma's embroidery box, which I will also be unboxing during cosplay Christmas. Even today, the pattern can be found in many modern appliques and embroidery books, not to mention all the designs that are available online, both for free and paid. Just saying this is laughably big for the tiny teapot, but we'll roll with it. It's the only teapot I have right now. Suitable for what I'm wearing? So we are doing this while dressed as Wednesday Adams because I have just finished my Wednesday Adams cosplay and realised that this video did not have an outro and we had to amend that. So this is done. Look how pretty it is. I finished a UFO from the 1930s and it feels so lovely and soft and it looks so amazing. The only kind of not great thing that I can see about it is at the front because the fabric had frayed along here it actually doesn't have a straight line if you look it kind of goes a little bit up but at the end of the day no one's really going to notice when it's sat on the table it doesn't hinder the functionality at all it's just a little bit off but if it means that we actually got to complete the project without a bunch of frayed edges then I am perfectly happy I definitely think adding the binding on the inside was the correct thing to do it looks really really good and neat and it just helps hold everything in place quite nicely certainly I think this will be quite a functional thing for tea and I do drink a lot of tea and I need a teapot that is more this size rather than the teeny one I've got because the teeny one makes less than half a cup of tea which is not acceptable no matter how cool this tea mug is so guys if you enjoyed this video please remember to drop it a like subscribe to see more videos particularly our cosplay Christmas ones we have many more coming up I'm sure and don't forget to leave a comment to tell me what you think of this project tell me what you think of my Wednesday Adams cosplay or you can just go check that video out because you may as well and it also really really helps the YouTube channel right this second guys I'm actually currently moving house which is why a lot of these cosplay Christmas videos have been very much pre-filmed and with that <laughs> it means that I currently am not really having a proper job so my YouTube channel is my only form of income and I would like to continue with it so by supporting me, drop me a donation on Ko-Fi so that you can get your name embroidered in my next project, or just commenting, liking, subscribing to my channel. It really, really helps me out. It puts my lovely ginger hair in front of many other people on this YouTube of in internet. And until next time, guys, I hope you have a wonderful festive season, a beautiful day, and I will see you then.